This is a quiet revolution. Uh, the cost of renewable electrons have really come down uh, dramatically. Uh, both uh, solar and uh, wind cost of electricity is at par or below what a superthermal power station unit of electricity costs. And the main thing is we need energy storage and uh, energy storage has to be both um, reliable and it has to be scalable and affordable. And this is where electrochemistry can offer really good solutions and uh, that's what we are working towards. Use of a spectrometer like Raman is very effective. Most of the time FTIR has too many uh, interfering peaks in uh, the range of materials which we use. So Raman is actually much more uh, ben, you know, useful for us. And we use it for a whole variety of things. If you are trying to look at transition metal oxides and the oxidation state change as lithium ion is intercalated into its structure, uh, we can look at the charge compensation from the point of view of uh, the different uh, transition metal oxides. Uh, we can also look at it from the point of view of what we call SEI layer formation. That's the uh, solid electrolyte interface. The solid electrolyte interface is a very important uh, aspect uh, related to safety of a lithium ion battery because they are the passivation layer which forms on an electrode surface preventing it from going haywire. So all of these things, trying to understand how the electrolyte degrades uh, as a function of cycling, all of that can be studied by Raman spectroscopy. It also looks at what happens uh, as a function of rate capability or how quickly you charge and discharge that battery. Everybody wants it to be done as quickly as possible, especially in the context of a car. And that is a materials related issue. And that's a design related issue also. One of the main techniques to look at that is through the Raman uh, microscope and especially if it can be uh, done under in situ conditions. We have a whole host of electrochemical techniques which we use, uh, ranging from the simple charge discharge uh, to very complicated uh, routines, uh, including electrochemical impedance techniques. So all of that is then tied into the spectroscopy and the close co correlation between the two is what we use to glean materials properties. And as we move along, we are trying to do the spectroscopy under in-situ operating conditions. So there are certain aspects of uh, how that instrument interacts with our cells, which is very critical. And that's where our partnership is so effective.